Huzzah, Rangers! This is Phil Harris here at the Jacks Rangers Show. I am joined with a very, very special guest this time around. He is a Free Jack staffer. He is a graphic designer. He does everything behind the scenes for the Free Jacks. He is Oliver Gilpin. Oliver, how the hell are you? Good, man. Really well. Uh, how are you? Excellent, excellent. I've got a bit of a video lag, but we're just going to roll with it, man. We're just going to keep going here. Uh, all of my uh, viewers, all the viewers on the YouTube, I apologize, but uh, it is what it is. If you're listening to the podcast, you're like, I have no idea what this guy's talking about. But uh, what is your origin story with rugby? Let's start there. We always want to start th- uh, that way with folks. Uh, so my my dad played um, in the 60s. Um and I was sort of a, um, I was sort of, I grew up with it, grew up watching it. Um, and sort of seven, seven years old uh, was my first, first rugby game. Actually, the, the two just behind me here um, is the two from my first ever jersey from uh, back in 1996, 1997. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, so yeah, I played uh, for the local team, loved it. Um, yeah, as I got a little bit older, I was going to lots of academy sessions and training pieces for um, places like Bath Academy. Um, nice. And then um, sort of 12 or 13, I sort of, I peaked, uh, to be fair. Um, everyone else seemed to hit puberty and I didn't. And <laughs> I was like, I stayed about four foot one until I was about literally until I was like 16 or 17 and um my rugby career was long was was long gone um by the age of sort of 15 and 16 so um yeah I was I yeah really I, I always hooked like love loved playing okay. grew up with it, watching watching the game and um yeah just I, I, it's part of part of the culture a little more I guess uh in the UK so yeah so you yeah. said you always hooked. How was your uh, line in uh, throws? So it uh, yeah, or... it was like yeah, yeah. I, I could throw darts. Yeah, yeah. It was my. Um, it's definitely my calling card. Like it was the one thing. Excellent. I think it probably carried me for a while there when I was playing sure. it at better, better standard for for county and stuff. Um, gotcha. Because I had I had pretty good darts. Yeah. Very good, very good. So obviously, you know the 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 accent, and you're talking about Bath Academy. You are English. Where did you grow up? So I grew up in. Um, in Somerset, uh, oh. yeah, in um, yeah, in England, um, it's known for cheese and cider. So okay, yeah, yep. so I got on really well in Vermont because that was uh, right. So, <laughs> some um, crossover, but yeah, so I grew up in the UK. Um, played played rugby for a town called Western Superman, West Superman Rugby Club. Played there for uh, throughout my junior years. Um, did some I played for North Somerset. I got a cap or two when I was 13 for the district uh, for Somerset. And then sort of my rugby career tailed off as I stayed, stayed mm-hmm. short and little. But yeah, gotcha. yeah, so, so Somerset, UK. I feel like Will Webster is from around that that area as we well. We grew up playing each other. It's so weird. What? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I'm yet to find a picture evidence, but um, no doubt. That's when, so cool. He played for Taunton, which is not far um we would play two or three times a year That's and cool. uh, yeah so i've played against i played against will we're the same age so uh, love that super strange yeah it was weird what a connection there that is super super cool what a small world i always tell mm-hmm. people this that uh, uh bill baker and i uh bill baker who does um yeah. uh eagles overseas mm-hmm. awesome guy also a, a season ticket holder for the free jacks we all always sit near each other um him and i probably played against each other in in the south in the early 2000s, he played for uh, Atlanta and I played for Charlotte. So we wow. definitely probably played for each other around that time, yeah. which is pretty, you know, it's a small world, man, especially with rugby. But um, let's talk about how did you find your way over to the States? Uh, how did that uh, come about? So 2013, uh, 2013 um, I sort of graduated college, um, packed up and went traveling and while I was in Panama, um, I met my now wife, um, and we traveled together for a while. Um, really hit it off. Um, started out with sort of just friends, and then came home. Sort of both mutually missed each other, I guess, and then um, got back in touch. Um, and yeah, and then we sort of made it work. Um, 
and long distance. Um, she came over to the UK um, to study medicine in London. Oh, nice. And uh, then we ended up coming back here in, uh, we originally moved back to West Virginia. Uh, she's originally from California, but she got, um, she got a clinical training um, for medicine in, in Huntington, West Virginia. So okay, yep. we moved there in 2017. Um, yeah, and I've, I've been here since. We went from West Virginia to, um, to New Hampshire, um, and then from New Hampshire, um, we've recently moved down to, to Northern Virginia. So, yeah. Very good. Very been here good. for a while now. So uh, you were telling me about your your uh, experiences down there in uh, in Northern Virginia, and I was just kind of wondering, like, how would you compare? Just kind of looking back at your experiences there in New Hampshire, how would you compare New England to Old England? I know you post a little bit every once in a while on Instagram, <laughs> yeah. like your your experience living amongst Americans. Talk yeah, about it's that. funny. Yeah, um, to be you know, what's funny. It's uh, I think it's I've traveled a, a fair bunch and. Um, seeing when a culture is completely different mm -hmm. and it, like you're you expect it to be different so it doesn't really catch you off guard but it's when the cultures are fairly similar so like the us to the uk is like fairly similar but then things will just completely blindside you <laughs> that you just think of, that everyone knows i mean my wife and i i'll still say words and she has no idea what that is right i remember my first christmas I asked where the Christmas crackers were and nobody knew what I was, <laughs> what I was talking about. So yeah, there's some, there's some, there's some differences in there. I experience them daily. I think um, the, the biggest, it, sort of the biggest culture, the biggest culture shock I think is just how big people, I think people back home realize how big the U S is. They, mm -hmm. they, I don't think they grasp it. Um, yeah. I've driven, coast to coast sort of six or seven times now and it is insane like you get on the you get on like a freeway and it's like you know exit in 960 miles like it is, <laughs> it is a big big country with yes. just like ever-changing landscapes and i think yeah. um i think it's really hard for people to grasp in the uk because mm -hmm. even cultures and across you know the north to the south they're yes. really change but not in the same way like every state is almost like its own country here. You it's know, amazing like, that we're yeah. all still together and united, right? I mean, yeah, like, there's yeah. big differences between where I grew up and where I live now in New Hampshire, huge Absolutely. differences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, for the most part, it's, it's fairly similar. Um, people are great everywhere. That's one thing I will say for the US, like yeah. everywhere we've been, um, everyone's awesome. Um, and particularly New England, I think there's some, they're probably the closest um, in attitude to old England, to be honest, like a little bit prickly and a little bit um, dry, like in yes. the way that they speak to you, but you know, we'll do anything for you. So yes. um, yeah, good. Yeah. Really good people. We, we loved, we love New England, hopefully, hopefully back soon. So yeah. Yeah fingers crossed on that. I think Scott Matthew puts it very, very well where he talks about New Englanders kind of like an onion, you know, on the outside, you're just like, what, why are they, these are little people a little bit reserved? Are they, yeah. you know, are they mean? No, they're not mean. It's just like, you have to kind of, you have to buy in or you have to earn people's, yeah, you know, to, for them to open up a little bit. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, what is your official title with the Free Jacks and tell us how you got the job, like to run, run us through that. Yeah, so um, I, my technical title, I think, is uh, is director of brand, uh, brand director. Um, wow. But the honest truth is, it's we're a small team, um, and yeah. job titles are, are fairly irrelevant. We all pitch in um, yeah. and do a lot, uh, much more than than your sort of one one job role for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and so, as part of that, I do graphic design. Um, I, I manage all of the a lot of the creative assets. Um, essentially, Brendan Buckley, who um, is one of the most talented people I've ever worked with, he runs all of the creative from video and photography. Um, he deals a lot in storytelling, and then I do all of the static graphics, um, the brand guides, uh, those things. Um, and we work really well together and sort of share the creative direction between the two of us. Yep. Um, I think that's probably the best sort of um 
a sort of rough idea of what I do. Um, I then also manage um, a digital um, marketing campaigns and out digital outreach. Um, so all those annoying Facebook ads and Instagram ads, <laughs> that's, that's me. Um, so yeah, uh, that's what I do. And then how I got the job is interesting, I guess. Um, I met Mags back in 2019, early 2019, um, as my wife's a doctor and, and so is Mags. And ah, they yes. work together. So right. um, we, we sort of bumped into each other um, during that time, sort of COVID-ish, uh, right before COVID. Um, and so, yeah, really hit it off. Um, good friends. Um, obviously, both have a huge interest in rugby and um, and brand building and, and business. And, yeah, we, we really got really, really hit it off. And I worked as a contractor um, for a long time, uh, 2019 all the way through um, till January just gone, um, where I took a more full time position. Um, I helped Ollie Inglehart back in the uh, yep. back in the Ollie Inglehart days um, here and there. Um, to be honest, he he's like one of the, <laughs> he's one of those guys that uh, I. I ca like I came in and he would like sort of ask help here and there. And then within six months, he was better than me at everything. Um, <laughs> and uh, like, you know, I'd worked on a career for 10 years and, you know, he just immediately was phenomenal at everything he touched, which was yep. amazing, but annoying to watch. Uh, sure. Yeah. 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 And I think, um, yeah, but, I mean, realistically, I mean, yeah, we're still stood on, on Ollie's shoulders. All the work that he did over the last few years is 100%. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Um, so yeah, so then I just took a January, I took a, um, a more full time position, uh, helping with um, the Free Jacks and also uh, In Between Days, which is the music festival um, that happens at Veterans uh, yes. at Fort Quincy. And so yeah, um, yeah, I, I, I took on, I filled a, a hole in the design uh, space, um, and then also bringing some knowledge from, you know, 12 years of brand building and um yeah brought that to the table so um it's been really fun it's been a really fun year uh, and i'm really excited for 2024 uh the 2024 Same. season um because i'll have more of a more of a solid input um and have time to really build stuff out so yeah yeah it's really exciting really so exciting. is it fair to say that you're responsible for all of like the match day ro roster graphics all of that sort of stuff is you yeah, I mean, we're, yeah, it's essentially, yes. So I build out a lot of the templates. Um, I don't like it's every week. Um, Mariel, uh, I don't know if you've met Mariel, she's incredibly talented. Um, also, like a really fast learner. She, when she went, like, I, I've been working with Mariel for a year and immediately she's just already better than me with Photoshop and stuff. Like, so yeah, another, <laughs> another Dartmouth grad that is, yeah. Ah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, it's annoying. Um, but yeah, so so it's more of a team effort, to be quite honest. Like, um, I'm responsible for the creation of those things, um, but it's very much a team effort in that gotcha. we all have an opinion, we all pitch in, um, and then we work on those pieces together. So yeah, um, the the Delta um, kickoff times and match day templates and um, all the roster pieces. Yeah, we, we build those out at the start of the season together and then... Um, one of the members of staff, like one of the team, will take that on uh, week by week and uh, fill those out working with the rugby rugby staff. Gotcha. I use a little um, uh, phone graphic called Studio. So, but I will say that I've gotten a lot better over the years. My <laughs> graphics look like shit to start with, but yeah. they're slowly <laughs> looking half decent, I guess. Uh, so yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's. It's one of those things where, like, I had no knowledge of how to do this at the very beginning, but I was just like, okay, I'm just going to do it. So I'm going to, you know, learn over time. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I, I, I'm, I becoming, get Go ahead. I'm becoming obsolete, to be honest. Um, most, uh, most of the apps and, like, design apps and stuff now that you can – you can use it just insane. Like the, the technology and the, the AI um, is just – yeah, it's bananas. Um, it is. It's really incredible to see. But uh, it's one of those things where it's just like, you know, the more you do it, the better you get and that sort of thing. So I, I feel good about the progress that the, the show has made in terms of graphic design. But when I look at your stuff, I'm like, well, 
I've got a long way to go. You know what I mean? That type of thing. So yeah, we've got a whole team there. So I guess that's yes, not really right. It's just me over here, pal. I mean, like we've got the outriders that help out, but you know, but it's just like you know, I'm doing the heavy lifting around here. Let's, let's be honest. <laughs> um, let's see here. Next thing I wanted to ask you about is you know, because you were talking about being excited about next year, and I'm sure we all are. It's going to be awesome. Can't wait to go back to back. That would be so sick. But let's take a rewind session here. Let's talk about overall impressions of the Free Jacks 2023 season. Yeah, I mean, what a season. Um, yeah, the I mean, overall, an interesting start there in, in yeah. preseason in Houston. Um I think it was sort of a, it was an in, it was an interesting one to watch. Um, there was so much. It was I, th I think the one thing I would say as a whole, I think we really we really won the whole the whole thing because of culture. Um, yeah. You know, we 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 took it to the end because we worked as a team. Yes. Um, and there's a million ways that you can talk about that like you know how many teams you know take a huge loss like you know josh like last losing larson Crazy. um you know how many teams are there that are able to still have such an amazing connected culture um you know and half of that's down to josh being so present um even right. through injury but also just the ability to sort of pass the torch um when he's not on the field um, and we've got such great leader, you know, leaders um, outside of just a captain too. Right. So, um, but yeah, no, I think the uh, the honest truth is, you know, that that first Houston pre preseason, I think we saw a lot of like sparks of brilliance. Mm -hmm. um, but the difference between the team that lifted the the shield at the end and the team that started um, was literally culture, and you know, hats off to scotty and and uh tk um mike um and will for really creating you know environments that yes. um create just positive amazing cultures um you know when you look at san diego uh on paper they are That's just i mean we're playing half the half the all blacks yeah. <laughs> um and then you've got sort of like you know then you've got like these guys from new england who grew up playing club rugby on the field right. you know like just taking it out there and destroying it and working with um working against these like you know these like gleaming <laughs> kiwis and yeah. just yeah and just killing it so you know that only comes from building cultures and um i think we've really got the best out there to be honest um yeah, the cultures wise, I just I don't think there's anyone there's anyone creating creating what we create. So a hundred percent. And Oliver, I know that you were there at the award ceremony that uh, that I was there at, and I, yeah. I, I I've been saying this multiple times on the podcast, but the way that the guys, the boys, you know, applauded and congratulated every single winner of the of the awards that night, like I could tell that these yeah. guys love each other. And that started way, way back in terms of the culture change with Absolutely. this new regime that came in with Scott Matthew And Mike Rogers has a huge role with that, with like the mini teams, all of that sort of stuff. Yeah. It matters. Like people will poo-poo that and say, you just put the best guys out there and they're going to win. Well, if that was the case, San Diego would have won the game, right? Absolutely. Because, yeah. you know, if you look, there, there was some positions that we had them beat on, but overall I felt like they were a better team. And, and Vegas felt the same way. We were the underdogs, right? But yeah. – because our guys loved each other and they were ready to go to war with each other and they didn't want to give up. We won that game because of the culture. You're hundred percent correct. The season yeah. was us winning it at the end because of the culture that was created. Depth had a lot to do with it as well. We've got a lot of depth on this team uh, in yeah, 2023. Yeah. So, but I feel like, you know, hundred percent calling out the culture is absolutely correct. I wanted, I know that you're the founder and president of the potty fan club fan club so oh, talk yes. about his contributions to this team in 2023 like a yeah. minute right unreal just unbelievable <laughs> unbelievable i mean what a guy he he um what he brought to the table was like um you know possession and also territory like yeah we did not play rugby in our own 22 this year um and that was realistically one of the top reasons you know besides constant points um yeah. from party but um you know 
we played rugby in their 22 more than we played rugby in ours. And right. at the end of the day, um, I think that is the, the real reason, um, you know, for, for us constantly, consistently winning. Um, it's very hard for people to win um, without the territory. I mean, yep. you know, possession is in, you know, obviously the most important part of the game, but um, possession on, on your try line is useless. Um, right. So, yeah, I think realistically what he brought was vision. Um, he brought like a level of maturity, I think, to the, the entire team. Um, and just, yeah, unbelievable kicking game, out of hand, off the tee. Um, yeah, just an amazing, amazing player. Really, really world class. I mean, his experience, just so steady, like a steady presence back there. Like nothing was going to, you know, make Potty blink. Like, you yeah. know, this guy's an NPC veteran. Like he's been there at that level. And it's a very, very high level. It's very, very right. comparable to MLR. Some say it would be it's technically better, which I'm not going to disagree with. Maybe physically we're right there, maybe even above. But, you know, this guy was forged from years and years of playing in uh, New Zealand. And if you're playing in New Zealand and consistently starting, you're a damn good player and he proved it for sure. Favorite yeah. moment of the season, what do you got? Oh, it's so hard. Um, <laughs> do, you know, do you know, I think for me, um, you know, the of the obvious, the win in um, Chicago was, was great. It really was. And lifting um, the Eastern Conference final, uh, that was great too. Yeah. But I think the thing that makes me come back, I mean, the wins are great, but the things that make me come back is just standing with like essentially 4,000 friends um, and watching a game. And I think for me, the Father's Day game um, against Houston was, there was just this moment at, uh, right before kickoff and the, you know, we sold the stadium out the, it was packed, but still, you know, uh, still great space. Um, you know, it was just it was just one of those moments where I was just like, I was so proud to be in that space with four thousand friends watching one of the best teams. Um, yeah, it was just yeah for me like the wins are awesome, but the yeah. what keeps me coming back is the and even before I was a member of staff, what kept me coming back as a season ticket holder was just that experience um yeah. so yeah for me i think the that father's day game was was a big one yeah man that that that's a special one for sure it, it it's all we're all growing this thing like you guys obviously you know being a part of the organization directly are are swinging the hammer more than you know just the fans themselves but we it all matters and it all we're all building a mansion that we can all enjoy you know down the road right so it, yeah. it's 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 very very cool that this thing is is just it's it's growing and we can see it grow. Like we're we're finishing certain parts and we're looking at it like that's really nice. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then once it all comes together when we're when we're at Fort Quincy and it's been expanded and we're, yeah. you know, putting it we're hanging our, you know, fifth championship banner we can all look back and say with our you know ten thousand friends like man this this is so cool this is where we wanted to be when we we're in fort union point and yeah, it kind of sucked right like yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we were yeah, yeah. I, I think that's the thing i mean you know you you say about like um the guys in the company you know beating that drum um but realistically the most important people uh, for our growth of fans, um, you know, we're a small team and, you know, if every single person who was a fan bought a, a friend or introduced a friend or sure. took their kids to, um, one of the Academy, um, one of the RT, like the regional training groups, um, rugby would grow exponentially faster than, than we can, than we yes. can grow it. Um, realistically, the best way, if you want to share or you want to see this sport grow, it's to bring friends. Um, it's to share it with with people on special occasions like birthdays. Um, yeah, that's the that's the best way to see this grow. And I think that fans actually are more important than than any of any of us in in the office. Um, myself, Mags included. Um, you know, we are all replaceable um, in the office, but the fans are not. And I think that's that's really important to to keep in mind for sure yeah 
it's a fan driven movement and that's the way rugby is like that i mean that's pretty much worldwide like i'm sure that there's some places where you know like rugby is like it's such a high level but at the same time it's like it's it's community driven especially here and, and certain other places in the world where like the fans are what matter like i'm a big soccer fan i'm sure a lot of people are going to give me shit because you can see there's a little bit of a manchester united logo poking out underneath <laughs> that scarf there but you know yeah. at, at that level like there's diehard fans that are season ticket holders and they'll go to every single game. It doesn't matter what's going on or every, all of that sort of stuff. But the fans are so far removed from the players. The players make in a week what most people will not make in a year under yeah. any circumstances whatsoever. And some make, you know, they won't make that in a lifetime, just what the one player will make in a month. Right. right. So it's just, it's so different. Right. Um, and I'm so glad that I, that we're a part of this together and that we're growing it in a community based model. I think that is so, so important. But let's talk about this right here, the logo, the Lantern logo. Who is responsible for that? You know, that was before me. I think that was even before Ollie Inglehart. Um, um, that was back in the day. Yeah, back uh, back in, I would guess, 2018, 2019. Um, not sure of the branding company. It would have been, um, it would have been a, a branding agency. Um, but yeah, it was uh, all created um, by Mags. Um, the story, the story goes that uh, they were looking for a name um, and they love the concept um, of being sort of having that revolutionary brand. And um, they, you know, were after the Paul Revere story and, yes. you know, what what is, you know, really, um, what's really important about, you know, the, the, the revolution is not necessarily like, the, the war or the revolt but it's actually the freedom piece right and i think um you know i i may i may be get, i may be getting this wrong so i hope i'm not misquoting max but um <laughs> this the uh, the story goes that uh he they loved the freedom piece and then they wanted that um they wanted a story in that narrative and i guess you guys you know everyone knows that um the british flag is called the union jack yes. um so it's like you know that remove that removal from uh, the the reign of the the Brits. Um, it's like being free of the Union Jack. So henceforth the um, the Free Jacks, uh, which is where the name comes from. And uh, I do always think it's quite ironic that I, as a as a Brit, I end up doing a lot of the rev like you know a lot of the branding pieces. I was just gonna say that Oliver, like with <laughs> yeah. with your accent, this is you know you're telling the story of the revolution in that that's the, all of the branding of the Free Jacks. I mean. Absolutely. Yeah. you know your ancestor just like what the hell is this guy doing <laughs> yeah. over there yeah 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 absolutely sure. so yeah that's the um that's where it started um and then the i don't know you were you were there um at the eastern conference final yeah when eric was on stage and proclaimed that they designed the logo to look like um look like it was drawn by uh by disney so i guess that was their design <laughs> i guess that was their design inspiration um that was something i learned at the at the eastern right. conference final so, yeah, there's always um, some good nuggets from Eric. If you let him talk long <laughs> enough, he'll tell you yeah. some wild stories for sure. Yeah. We've got to give him a microphone more often. hundred percent. Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. I'll never forget when he was on the show, he was telling us about how he got some dirt, some soil from uh, the battle of Lexington and Concord. And we'll sprinkle that on the turf every once in a while. And I'm just like, wow, man, that is, <laughs> that's, that's cool. But I'm just like, I would have never guessed that that actually yeah, yeah. takes place. You know, <laughs> I love that. Um, let's talk about your design uh, contributions to the Free Jacks in terms of the logos. We know the Junior Jacks and the regional team logos are your babies. Talk about how those came about. What other designs have you created for the Jacks other than those? Yes, yeah, well? so, I mean I've done yeah I've done the all of the RTGs. Um, yeah, like you say, I did the Junior Jacks, the Independents. Mm -hmm. um, I did the I did the vintage um, pieces this year. Nice, um, which was one of our hottest. Uh, items of the year, uh, sure. the vintage jerseys and all well, the vintage pieces. Um, I worked on all, pretty much every template for uh, through the 2023, um, every touch point from through the 2023 season. Um, the all of the I did all of the membership pins, so all of oh, the okay. season member pins from from back in 2020 all the way to. Uh, all the way to now. I'm actually working on the 2024 um, as we speak. So if you've got any suggestions, let me know. All right. um, yeah, and then um, 
I do, I help maintain, um, help maintain the websites and, and those other pieces. So yeah, pretty much anything that has a design element to it, I do it. Um, I get like all of the festival posters and festival tees. Um, nice. Those are all me. Those are all me as well. So Very yeah, um, yeah, a lot, a lot of finger, <laughs> finger in everything, pretty much. <laughs> it is a team effort um, yeah. for the most part, but but yeah, I manage those pieces. Um, and then the RTGs, um, I did that back when I was a contractor in 2020, middle of COVID. Um, and those were, that was a really great learning experience. Talking about the revolution, like I ended up doing sort of, you know, weeks and weeks and weeks of research on um, nice. on the Revolutionary War. And um, each, each RTG is linked specifically to a certain area of New England. So, right. um, the Pine Rioters are linked to the New Hampshire border, and then yep. you know they're linked into um, the Pine Riots, and there's like a story and a narrative. Abel Ebenezer, yeah, yep. yeah, and there's, yep. exactly, yeah, and then um, so yeah, there's a story in, behind each piece, um, so and so cool. yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, um, it was it's something I'm really proud of. It was a lot of work, and um, one thing I will say about working for Mags um, is that he, if you're going to do something. Um, he's very much about doing it properly and mm -hmm. he put as much time and care into the academy pieces of the business and the rtgs um as he would of any other piece um and i think that's really commendable yeah. um because we are it's, you know it's one thing to say we're a community focused organization mm -hmm. and i think it's another to actually do it and yes. be community focused and um it was really great it was one of the reasons that you know i ended up coming to work full time um with the free jacks because you know any organization that's willing to put quality um into every aspect every area um i think yeah is, is a company worth working for so um yeah, yeah, they, they were. That was the um, RTGs. There's actually a really interesting story about the Independence uh, Let's hear it. logo, which I don't think I've, don't think I've shared with anyone actually at all. Let's hear it. Um, it Maybe even people in the organization don't know this. An exclusive um, right here, folks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we. Um, so I was researching Independence, um, the Independence logo, and uh, I was looking around for inspiration. Um, you know, and that's part of everything the you know, part of what i do is every heritage design um you know mags and i mags is an uh, amazing uh, brand builder and one of the things he says is that whatever you build uh, whatever he, you know whatever visual pieces we put out especially mm -hmm. when it comes to logos um could it have existed 100 years ago and will it exist in 100 years so it's Ooh. like it's that like piece of it's a it's an element to that brand process that Interesting. you know especially with a heritage brand and a heritage feel like the free jacks yeah. um it's important to put like a story to every piece yes um and there is a i discovered i was i was in a for inspiration i was in a museum in um in boston and i came across the Forster flag, Forrester flag, or Forster, I think it's Forster flag. Um, do you know the story of the Forster flag? No, tell me which one that one is. So it's a big red flag. And oh. it's got, and it's got three, it's got seven um, white lines on it. And it's, okay. it's this big red piece. I think it's actually in Austin, Texas now, um, oh. but it was originally in Boston. And what had happened was um, they found this flag it had been made into a dress and they found it in some yeah really weird they, it, they found it in some ch old chest um i believe in a bakery or something huh. and um it turns out that this flag is uh was a british union jack so like you know the british flag oh i see and it had been captured by the rebels uh yep. by, by the revolutionary uh yeah, by the, the Americans, yeah. Revolutionary. and they um they had they had cut it up, and so they nice. literally, and it was the most amazing story because I was like, wow, this is literally the free jacks, right? Like yeah. they're taking the jack and they're becoming free of it, and so yes. what they did was they cut those white stripes from the Union Jack up and they sewed them in the seven, wow. uh, seven lines to represent the seven states, and um, so I was like, that is too perfect. That's so good. Cool. To not use that as a as a you know like a uh, the piece for the, the 
the design. So that's where the flag comes um, Interesting. in the independence logo. It's actually right. based on the Forster flag. And uh, yeah, and so that's that's the, the foundation of, of that design piece. That is brilliant. Yeah, yeah so, I cool. mean, I feel like, you know, there, there's some Free Jacks nerds out there like myself that see certain logos and like, what is that about? Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. and the independence one is one of those where I liked the old logo. I understand that you didn't it, were involved in that one. It just yeah. looks cool. But now yeah. that I know the story that you're explaining of the new one that you designed, I, yeah, I love definitely. it. You know what I mean? That is so, yeah, so cool yeah. for sure. Yeah, it's very cool. Absolutely. And for, of course, for the folks that uh, do not know the, um, what he was talking about, the RTGs, that's the regional training groups that take place. Um, that's like, uh, it's like uh, player identification and stuff like that and development yeah. in academy specific stuff, areas. Yeah. yeah. Academy stuff within New England. So uh, let's talk about uh, strangest thing that you've ever designed before. Uh, not just as a you know, free Jacks employee, but uh, what's the, Weirdest thing. Don't have to name a brand. Brand. Um, I did a. I mean, I've done a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah. But I think one of the the most recent ones. Um, I did a shoe brand. Um, oh. where they wanted a talking, a walking talking lemon, um, <laughs> which was kind of cool. Um, maybe not super weird, but yeah, kind of interesting. Um, a lemon yeah, for a shoe company. Wow. Yeah, it's, it was cool. Um, yeah, I've, I've done, I mean, I've done, I've done tons of stuff. I get a lot of, I get a lot more odd requests, to be honest, as a designer. Like people, people remember, like, you know, will, you know, know me from college or, you yeah. know, friends and family. And I get crazy Photoshop requests. Oh, uh, yeah. Like yeah. I'll get the most insane, can you, you know, Photoshop remove in somebody? It. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you add in a crocodile or, you know, it's just like bananas requests like that. I get that all right. the time. So. But oh, uh, yeah, that's the, the majority, the majority of the insane people are normally family. So yeah. <laughs> Very <laughs> good. Um, I know that we've talked about him quite a bit in this episode, but any mag story that's not out there already that you can share with us, like I, a crazy yeah, mag I, story? I mean, it's always fun. Uh, yeah. It's always fun. I don't know. Yeah, he's n nothing particularly crazy comes to mind. Um, yeah, nothing particularly great. I mean, the crazy one of the craziest things that has ever happened is I met Mags for lunch one day, and this is 2020, 2022, and it's sort of, I don't know, spring, May or something. Um, and he said, oh, we're in a couple of weeks, we're, we're starting a music festival. And I was like, that's not something you do in a couple of weeks. Right. Um, and uh, so, yeah, like he's, he, uh, we turned out a, from sort of start to finish in eight weeks, we turned out a music festival. That is um, insane. Yeah, I don't think, yeah, no super crazy uh, stories, but just like a, an amazing, opti always an amazing optimism um, that of like, think like things we can achieve if we put our mind to it. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, just it's a good example of just sort of, you may, you know, from afar, it might seem crazy, but yeah. you know, somehow we seem to pull these pull these things off. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's always fun for sure. I mean, just an incredible guy. What a great leader. The Free Jacks are very, very lucky to have him. I've said that since the beginning. You know, uh, we're talking about community focused, you know, uh, organization. That is definitely the Free Jacks. They out, they don't just talk the talk; they walk the walk. And that is Mags, you know, leading that charge and uh, pump, you know, uh, beating that drum for sure. And it's one of those things. It's like. The Free Jacks did it first, and it's so successful that other organizations are just like blatantly copying them to try to catch up, right? Yes. It's, it's one of those yeah. things that like we can kind of you know beat our chests about like the Free Jacks have made this thing successful through absolutely. what Mags's vision was, and it was right the whole time. Which yeah, is really absolutely. Cool. And I mean, the other thing too is like we're you know we're, our growth is steady and consistent. You know, yeah. I think that's the the most amazing part of all of it. You know, it's really easy to um it's really easy to put on a game and you know play to a stand of you know a thousand people but to see consistent growth and engage with people and have those amazing experiences um yeah i think that's where the magic comes you know it's easy to do it when you're when it's you and your buddies but when it's like when you're trying to grow and you're still giving the same experience mm -hmm. um to the first 1500 as you you, you are the you know the next 4000 i think yeah, that's where the magic is for sure. 100%.
Uh, message for the Rangers out there uh, before we get you out of here. Anything that you want to say to the loyal Free Jacks fans out there? Yeah, um, yeah. For me, I I want to say a definite definite thank you guys. Um, we have a we have uh, absolutely have the best fans in the world. Um, the I will say like you'll see me down there with a camera or like you know directing traffic or something. It is the loudest, craziest, not like it's unbelievable. Like the amount of fact you feel as you're walking by, you feel the ground shake. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it, and you know, I think that's the what the difference. And you know, we, um, I'm sure you've spoken, you've spoken to a bunch of players about it. Um, but the difference that makes on game day the difference that makes to players um i don't know if you saw recently there's uh i'm not a big baseball fan but i, I stumbled across it on instagram or TikTok or whatever mm -hmm. there's a um the the phillies had a um a, 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 a batter having a tough time and he yep. struck out like a bunch and instead of like you know booing and getting mad about it they every time he came to the plate uh they gave him a standing ovation right right and he you know he knocked it out of the park and then right, suddenly yeah. he's back batting like better than he was before his dry spell yeah and i think like realistically we can't underestimate the power of fans we can't underestimate the 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 power that that brings you know there's a reason that there's a home field advantage right like yes i think that's my biggest thing to you know Jack's Rangers, but the fans in general, it's like a huge thank you. Like it makes a difference. Like, the reason the reason we're undefeated this year at Fort Quincy is yeah. because of the fans. Um, yes. And it is huge. Um, and just, I think the other thing too is uh, the kindness, like the amount of times that I've walked past a fan introducing someone who's new to rugby to the rules or in you know chatting to them about like the culture or in like bringing them uh, in with open arms mm -hmm. i think that's massive you know for yes. for us to grow and for, for this to really be a thing we need we need more fans in the door and it's amazing to see our current fans like open like with open arms welcoming yes. the new people yeah. um and so yeah huge thank you for that too it's 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 awesome yeah, man, the only way that this thing is going to continue to grow is that, you know, you bring new people along and, and you're patient with them as that. I know that all of the fans are, as you're describing, um, you know, patient and explain the laws. If people are asking, you know, just try to get people engaged. That's what we do on this show. Um, yeah, but so it, it's one of those things. It's like this thing will be huge, but it takes all of us trying to continue to spread the good word of rugby that's yeah. how this thing works like the free jacks winning the championship in the boston market that makes a huge difference and i'm sure that we will have sellouts throughout the, all the home games next year but we have to continue to work and make sure that everybody around us knows yeah. about the game of rugby and that it's available at fort quincy you need to just come yeah. out and, and see it i think uh you know, Spider's the best fan out there as far as I'm concerned. But he said something that was that, that like blew my mind. And I think it's the best description of Fort Quincy and just the Free Jacks in general. He said it's the best kept secret or it's the best hidden gem in the Boston area. And he's absolutely right. Absolutely. hundred yeah. percent. Absolutely. Um, so, and I think, that, and I think that, yeah, that's for me the best part. I mean, you know, it is the, it is the best hidden gem, especially now, you know, for the you get to come and experience this you know amazing sport and maybe you've got some relationship to it maybe you don't um but also then at the end of the game you get to i mean where else do you get to walk on the field and meet the yeah. stars and then watch a band play and yeah. enjoy a beer and you know sit in the sun in the evening and just have like you know this people running around as kids like learning to play and pass the ball like that's not an experience anywhere else in like at all it just doesn't exist in sports yes. and i think you know that is all from you know from mags and i think what an amazing experience you know when we were when i was sat you talk back to you know father's day i was just sat in the sun listening to old crow play mm, yeah. and uh yeah and like what what an amazing thing that we we do and we have 
have a chance to be a part of. So yeah, huge thank you to the fans for sure. 100%. Accessibility is such a huge, huge, you know, thing for the Free Jacks. And, and, and it's a really awesome thing that rugby can provide because I, I tell this to people all the time. If you think that you're going to get onto the pitch at uh, Gillette Stadium and give a high five to Mac Jones at the end of a football game, you're leaving <laughs> yeah. in handcuffs, pal. That's not going to happen. You know yeah, I mean? absolutely. But yeah. it happens at the Free Jacks. You can give Josh Larson a high five at the end yeah. of the game. You know what I mean? It's, it's pretty cool. So with that being said, Oliver, I, you know, we've, we've done it all. We've been on here for 45 minutes. You've been fantastic. I've got one word for everybody to exit the video here in three, two, one. Huzzah! Huzzah!